Hi everyone, Golden Pokemon. And today we are opening up a gift we got from our close family friend in Hong Kong, Joanna. It is the Sword and Shield um, equivalent of Darkness Ablaze, but Set B. Why Set B? Well, in other countries, unlike the English product and the Japanese product, it's very common to have one set which contain a certain number of um, colors, I guess, energies, and one set to uh, contain the other set of energies. So they split them up in set A and set B. So if you're playing certain style of, um, of Pokemon TCG cards, you know which set to pick. And in this case, um, early on of the Sword and Shield, when um, Hong Kong, Taiwan were catching up on the TCG playing side, they decided to combine Darkness Ablaze and uh, um, some of the other sets. Um, it's a mishmash, really, because if you can see here, there is amazing rares in here as well. I have a pack from the set B. And if you look on the top here, we have fire. Let me see close enough, I'll bring more light over. Whoa, sorry. Um, you see fire, lightning, fighting type, and metal. So here is a full box. We can put the box, I guess, uh, on the side here in front of Marnie. And uh, let's go ahead and open it and see what we get. I'll put the pack aside. And uh, let's see if we can pull some of the cards. So. Um, because the set is so mixed up, I don't have a strong reference in terms of what it is. Um, so it'll all be a surprise for all of us. Uh, some people like to do their research. I just like opening packs, so um, sometimes I like it to be a surprise. Oh, print quality is interesting. You can see some dotting there. It's like a dot matrix print. And right away we've got an Ampharos. Ampharos V. Look at that. So we'll put him on the electric spot. <clears throat> and... Uh, See if we can get anything else. I don't know what the odds are, so we'll kind of play the odds along as we go. I do find that a lot of these Asian packs in which you have um, single types of energies, the odds are better um, because the sets were really designed more towards TCG rather than playing because a lot of these countries were not considered, um, you know, international collecting sets. They're really, really uh, brought out for um, TCG play. Because if you were collecting Pokemon, you were most likely collecting the Japanese or the English product. Um, because from a collector's standpoint, that would be where the value is. But if you were playing TCG, um, like in Indonesia and Thailand and any of these other places, well, the local domestic product would be important. And there was a big push in Taiwan and Hong Kong. Um, and now it's kind of stretched into, whoops, we cut a card, stretched into mainland China um, to get the TCG going a little bit more with uh, domestic products. So... Um, there are a lot of catch-up products, a lot of combined, oh, Houndoom, a lot of combined sets to catch up, especially in the Indonesian pro, um, uh, market where you would see a lot of combined sets done because, uh, A, um, there's a, probably a smaller population of players, so the volume would have to substantiate a print run, and they would make a larger set to ensure that they got all the cards to catch up periodically, where in Japan, it's very common to see a set come out every three weeks or every month. Uh, which is why we see so many sets in Japan, but they're sets of only 70 cards. Um, they have the volume there, they have the frequency, they have the collector and the player base, so they can break up the sets into smaller pieces uh, for distribution because they know that the sales volume would be there to substantiate it. Where in some of the smaller markets, it's probably two or three sets a year, um, and they're combined sets. Um, and as the population starts to normalize or starts to catch up, then they'll start making sets that match the Japanese releases. Again, just so you guys know, in typical fashion, all the international cards have the same um, back card as your typical um, English print, uh, though they are printed in Japan. Um, they are the same as the international backings, unlike the Japanese cards, in which the back is the gold, um, the gold finish. So um, that's how you'll be able to differentiate the cards. Of course, you know, for some of us, we don't speak the languages, so just looking at the back will help us differentiate. Um, I believe the Taiwanese Hong Kong sets and the Japanese sets after they um, eventually caught up in the Vivid Voltage um, and, or Shiny Star V used the same acronym or same letter base for these sets other than the little F that's on the side. So that's how you'd be able to tell the difference, but they pretty much use the same sets. And at that point, they have the same checklist, so the sets matched up. If you wanted a chunk of chew and rainbow, well, you can buy that product and you'd be able to get it instead of these mystery sets in which all the sets were mixed up and pulled from different sets and combined based on the energy types. So again, fighting energy is one of them, so we wouldn't find a, um, a 
water energy card in this. So um, we're not gonna find that. Same with Amazing Rares. We're not gonna find Rayquaza in here because Rayquaza is energy type, uh, which is uh, colorless, I believe. Or is it, um, yeah, would not be in this that is. Well, I have to take that back. There is a colorless here. What's a better example? Oh, here's uh, Togekiss. Um, what's a better example of something that'd be in here? Um, uh, no, Jirachi could be in here. Um, oh, um, Zamazenta and Zacian, per se. Zacian's Amazing Rare, I believe, is... Is it Psychic? I think. And so it would not be in here, but Zamazenta would be. That makes sense. <laughs> Anyways. Or don't pay attention to any of my random banter. It's banter, nonetheless. But... Uh, just a little, you know, heads up if you haven't seen my previous videos when I talk about this stuff, but just a little idea on what and how these products is made up. Uh, follows the same Japanese standard. You have five cards per pack. You are not guaranteed a rare per pack, so it's common that you can have two uncommons and, uh, sorry, two uncommons and three commons. That would be the, um, the lowest denominator of pack you could get. Um, and then you can get... Um, commons and then a rare and then of course uh, ultra which they call rr and then like this and then there's a rrr which is your v max and then of course after that the odds go out the window and the rest of them are considered secret so if you guys don't know here is the count uh, for the set but the cards such as full arts automatically become secret rares and the um, rainbow rares or hrs and sometimes um, do not count towards your secret rare for box. So you could get a hollow rare and a full art rare. And then you have alternate arts, which aren't in these sets, only started afterwards um, as options too. But you are usually guaranteed one secret rare per box for Asia, with the exception of Korean product. If you, couldn't, if you can't keep up with what I just said, rewind the video and you can follow it. Um, most Asian products have a secret rare. Korean products do not guarantee a secret rare. and But Korean products do follow the Japanese set list. Um, and up until a certain set, the Thai product, Indonesian, and the Chinese product do not follow the set lists for the Japanese product until Vivid Voltage or... or they don't even follow it for Shiny Fates because um, Shining Fates in uh, Thailand and Indonesia um, were two separate sets. They had two sets. Set A and set B. And again, where um, the common denominator was the type energy types for each set A. So if you bought Shiny Star V um, Thai, I believe set A was the one you can get the Shiny Star V Max in, the Charizard. Set B was the one you could get um, the Marnie. But set A was better because you could also get a V Max um, Pikachu because they did not have a Vivid Voltage Electrifying Tackle set in. Ooh. All right, so there's your Secret Rare, your Steelix Full Art. Unfortunately, some un, some crappy print lines there on the top, or uh, whiting. But that would be your Secret Rare, your Steelix Full Art V. Um, and you can backtrack and check out a lot of the other Asian products we've opened up just to get an idea of how the other products work. But anyways, back to this product. Um, if you didn't know, the Chinese language product, this one specifically, is for the Taiwanese and Hong Kong market, um, despite one speaking Cantonese and the other one speaking Taiwanese or a version of, um, I'm going to get laced out for this, it's Taiwanese, but it's not dissimilar from um, uh, Mandarin. Um, the language used, the character language used on the cards are all the same. So the card could be read in Cantonese or Mandarin um, with the what we, I call kanji, which is the Chinese characters. Uh, so they can be used for both markets. And now I believe a lot of people buy them to use for the Chinese markets. Um, I have not seen China-specific products. Chinese products exist, but not China-specific. And as it says on the product, it's being sold specifically in Taiwan and Hong Kong. Now, the reason why I don't know if there's a product in China specifically and a good reason why Japan still prints all the multi-languages other than the um, English product, but the ones for Asia, specifically in Japan, is um, copyright protection. They print it there in order to ensure that um, companies or factories in China aren't mass printing fake cards based on the Japanese templates. That being said, there are a lot of fakes out there, but because there is no specific factory in China printing it and that they're also controlled by Japanese printers in Japan, 
the mass templates aren't available. So what you end up seeing is a copy of uh, a rendition. Whoa, look at that. Very cool. Zamazenta, amazing rare. Did not even think about this as a possibility. Completely forgot, amazing rares in this. Wow, what a sick card. Very sick, come on, get in there. Ugh. What a sick card, look at that. Um, and by controlling the print control in Japan, you can see the print quality is unbelievable. It's the same as the Japanese product. It's got that uh, honeycombing in the background and you turn in the angle, you get all those different, different shades depending on how the light's hitting it. But the print quality is excellent. The quality of the cards are excellent and that's because it's being printed there. So we would do that. Let's try it on this one. I have not seen it. Uh, oop, you see, we got something there. Okay. Ball picks. Got something here. Another V. Um, so that's five Vs. That's five Vs. Five Vs. Okay. We got uh, four packs left. So we have not pulled the V Max, guys. Not pulled the V Max. So if you just fast forwarding through the video and you caught this, no V Max yet. There is still a possibility of pulling a Charizard V Max. Let's pull the last card to the front. All right, Swablu. Oh, and this pig of a squirrel. <laughs> Too much goodies for that squirrel. All right, so no. Oh, there's something here. There's something here. All right. Aaron, I think, no. Teddy Ursa. Oh, and oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> All right, we did already pull a secret. We already did pull a amazing rare, and we pulled five Vs so far. So we may not get a VMAX, but we may get one. And I think it's in here. All right, guys, you ready? Are we going to get the beauty? Beauty. Let's see if I can cheat on the biddle. Okay, we know it's a VMAX, guys. You can see there. Do you see any fire and stuff? I don't think this is it. Look, it's a colorless. It is, oh. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, it's not the VMAX we wanted. Okay, we got another VMAX. Last pack here. Another VMAX. <laughs> Would it be funny if they just stuck the two VMAXs in the last two packs? Yeah, I don't think so. Sorry, guys. No Charizard VMAX in this box, unfortunately. And boo. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, unfortunately, we did not pull the big, the big D, but um, the big dragon, <laughs> the big D. Um, but we'll hopefully pull the chunk of chew in the next box. So, um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video, and uh, have a great day.